How's it going? It's Peter from the film scoring department. I'm going to be importing a QuickTime video into Logic Pro today and getting it in sync. Before I even get into Logic, I'm just going to go ahead and double click on the video so I can open it up and make note of a couple of things. What I'm assuming is that you have a video and that it has a SMPTE burn-in of timecode somewhere on it, like this one has here. And uh, the first thing you'll do is drag that slider all the way to the left so you know that you're at the very beginning of the first frame. And make a note of this frame. In this case, it's uh, 0 hours, 59 minutes, 3 seconds, and 13 frames. You might be working with a different video, and the numbers on your screen would be different than these. I'm just making a note of that. And while I'm here, since I'm using this to make some music starting a little ways into the video, I'm going to look visually for the point where I want my music to start, because that's a separate time in this case. And I know it. I know there's a cut here. Oh, I just passed it. I'm going to use the left arrow of my keyboard to just toggle back a few frames. There's that cut. Let me go forward one frame. There's the cut. And so I'm taking a note of this number, 0 hours, 59 minutes, 9 seconds, and 1 frame. It's a different time. It's a little bit later than the start time of the video. It is the start time of the music. Again, you might be working with a different video than I have here, and the number you see is different than this. Last thing I'll make note of here is that from the window menu, I can pull up the movie inspector, also available as command I. And this little menu tells me some information about the video that I may need to know depending on what I'm doing with it. Uh, the video is at 24 frames per second and the audio part of it is 44.1 kilohertz for this particular video document. Now I can quit QuickTime Player and launch Logic. Make a new document for this to come in. It doesn't even matter if I have any tracks or not to do this part of it. You can just get right into it. I like to, using the view menu, I like to change the control bar and display. I like to customize it so that it shows SMPTE up there while I'm working. So I'll just go ahead and do that right now. And something I can do before I even bring in the video, I can go to File, Project Settings, Synchronization, and here's a window where I can set up some things. For one thing, we know my frame rate's 24 frames per second because we checked that out earlier. Your video might be different. And here's something I need to put in manually. I need to tell Logic at bar one of the music, the very beginning of the music, where are we in the video? And that's the second number that I took down. So I'm going to just type it in right here. Zero hours. 59 minutes, 9 seconds, and 1 frame. That could be a different number in your project. And now Logic knows where bar 1, beat 1 should be, regardless of where the start of the video is, which is before that. And I can close that. And you can see that the number I just entered is now displayed. Back to the file menu, movie, open movie. Logic's allowing me to navigate to where that movie file was that we saw earlier. Where it is. Gives me an option to import the audio and to have the movie window open. I'll, I'll say okay to both of those things. Depending on your needs, you may not need to import the audio, but if you're gonna export this later and include both the, the production audio, the dialogue stuff, and your music that you're adding, then you, it makes sense to have an audio track imported. Something you notice right away is that the time code in the movie, displayed on the screen in the movie, doesn't match the time code in the timeline or the control bar. And that's very important that they're in sync. And that's the last thing that we have to do to get this prepared. If you control click on the movie window itself, 
you get a contextual menu. And the bottom option of the menu is the movie project settings. And here's where you tell Logic where the first frame of the movie is, what that number is, which is the first number we took down. 0, 59, it's actually 3 seconds and 13 frames, which may be different than the video you're working with. And while I'm in here, I could mute the audio that's in the, in the movie itself since I've imported the audio. And now you can see that we're in sync here. The, the SMPTE time displayed in the movie matches that of the control bar. And if we scroll along to the end, we see that it matches at the end too, meaning it doesn't drift off at any point, nothing's out of sync. No matter where we are in the movie, the time displayed in logic and the timeline will always match the time embedded in the movie, and we are in sync. The last thing, and it's not required, but is handy to know, is that since we already know that there is some movie before the beginning of the music, before bar one, we may want to be able to play through that, display it, or see it in the timeline in some way. And Logic allows us to do that easily. If you hover the cursor over the, the top of the timeline to measure numbers, you see there's a little triangle on the left side of that. If you click and just drag that out, you can add some negative measures that weren't there, and yet it doesn't throw the movie out of sync. We're still, timeline still matches the movie.